It's happy hour in Michigan, and the blend being sought today, the perfect mixture of speed and driver comfort, fuel mileage, all mixed together. That recipe might produce a trip to Victory Lane at the end of 400 miles here tomorrow afternoon. Before the cars hit the track, let's hit the garage. Here's Matt Yoakum. Well, two-time Michigan winner Jeff Gordon climbing in. Jeff, you've improved a little bit from your qualifying spot, but uh, what do you have to accomplish this session to get this car back to where it was here in June? Uh, you know, we're not really trying to, to get high up there on that board. I mean, if the car is good at the beginning of the run and it's good throughout the run, then great. But, um, you know, we're really just working on balance, just, uh, you know, trying to get the car freed up enough to where we can be good in traffic because we are starting in the middle of the field and uh, be able to get it, you know, where it just stays good for, for a long run and ran around some good cars and, and, you know, see some areas where we can be better and just going to work on that. He was 18th in the first session. Same car he finished third with here in June. Marty? Matty, Rusty Wallace will start 31st tomorrow, but today one of the top guys in practice this morning. Rusty, is a car good enough to win? Yeah, it's good enough to win, no doubt about that. We've been, you know, chasing chassis stuff, and yesterday just weren't fast. This car had handled good, but just was no speed, so I don't know what that was all about. But, uh, hey, man, we're trying to win. Lately, it's been Mission Impossible for some <laughs> dumb reason, but... Hey, I'm not a quitter. I'm digging. We're trying to get her going. The team's working hard, and uh, every single race we go to, we try to get this thing in victory lane. And so Michigan's been a good track for me in the past. Hopefully this will be the week. If not, <laughs> we're going to Bristol, and that's always been a good one, too. And that's a great point. He brings up two of his best tracks coming up here at Michigan and Bristol next week, where he tested earlier this week. Dave Burns. Well, Marty, Sterling Marlin had a great car this morning. I say had because after about eight or ten laps, he had some problems. Sterling, what happened with your car? We got a got a real good car. We locked fifth quick in practice, but uh, we run about about eight or ten laps and it starts missing. So uh, I believe some boxes in it just gets hot, starts missing. So I uh, hope we got it fixed. All right, he'll get in a couple minutes, guys. Remember, he was good here in the spring. Sterling looking to have another good run here. All right, Dave, thanks. Alan Bestwick, Benny Parsons, Wally Dallin back here at Michigan International Speedway, where the Winston Cup cars are getting set to hit the track for their final practice. And you think one of the things you're going to be looking for most in this practice is fuel mileage. And a couple of things. Number one, you ask people, what kind of fuel mileage do you get in your car? Oh, 19, 20 miles a gallon. That doesn't work with the race cars. You've got to be precise. 4.5, 4.6. Second thing you've got to know is how much does the gas tank hold? Does it hold 22 gallons? Third thing you've got to know, how much does it pick up? Is the pickup tube in the right location to get the entire 22 gallons out of the car? They've got to figure that out in happy hour. You wanted me to surprise you with what I was going to ask you, so yes, he has I no can't idea what's wait. coming. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you, you know, what the stock closing stock market average was <laughs> yesterday, but I'll stick with something you might know something about, uh, that the Yahoo factor on this track for a driver. They really love running here. Yeah, this is a fun racetrack because it's so wide, and there's so many different grooves. You'll see guys right, right on the bottom. Tony Stewart's one of those guys that puts the left side right on the bottom line. You see guys in the middle, you see guys up top. This is a very fun racetrack to run. As Jeff Gordon said, though, you've got to get that balance, especially in traffic, because we'll hear about the arrow push here. You get a lot of that when you're in traffic. Do you know what the Dow did yesterday? Was it up or down? I'm sure it was down. Yeah, you're wrong. <laughs> so, getting set for Winston Cup final practice here at Michigan International Speedway. Kurt Busch among those hitting the track when we come back. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. NASCAR Happy Hour for Michigan International Speedway is brought to you by Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. Quaker State, the power to reduce friction. Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. And Wagner, wide-shot power painter. Professional results in a third of the time. Cars getting set to roll here at Michigan International Speedway for Winston Cup final practice. But before they go, let's check back in the garage. Here's Dave. Well, Alan, Terry Labonte is in a great position right now. His car was eighth quick this morning in the morning practice, and I just checked with their crew. They don't need to change anything else on this car to make it good for the race. So now they can just try things, and that's what they'll do during this session. Matt? Dave, one big surprise during the first session was Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was 38th on the sheet, and Tony Urey Jr., any cause for concern, or are we just trying a few different experimental things? Uh, we were just trying some uh, few things on the geometry of the car, just because we don't really get to test it very much, so we figured we'd waste an hour and try to figure it out. But uh, it really wasn't working for us all that well, so we just kind of went back to what we run here in the spring, which we're, we're not too worried. We should be just fine. Uh, just trying to make the car a little better, make it turn in the center a little better. Different race car from what they race with here in June, but it is a very fast setup. He finished seventh. Marty? 
Well, Matty, our pole sitter, Bobby Labonte, has the same race car he started with here in June. Started first that day, finished second. Second fastest in the first practice this morning. His crew chief, Fatback McSwain, told me, you know, just because we're on top of the charts doesn't mean the car is good. That means we're fast at the beginning of a run. But the key here, we have to be fast at the end of the run. We found that out in June. Alan? It's Mike Skinner's car, the Army car that everybody's going around on pit road there. For some reason, didn't want to fire up in its spotted line. And I tell you, these guys need this practice session because I was in the garage area right after that first practice session this morning, and they talked about just how slick it was, just how much those cars were sliding through the turns. Well, we talk about this racetrack a lot as far as the temperature goes, and it is probably the most temperature-sensitive racetrack that the Winston Cup cars race on. It, it very, very, this track, track changes so much with the heat. And like Benny said, when it gets hot, it gets slick. They go in the corner, when that track gets slick, the car just slides across the racetrack. Mark's car not sliding there, staying on that white line. But after a few laps, after two or three laps, it's going to start sliding up the hill. Marty? Well, BP, BP, I talked to Rusty Wallace about this uh, very subject just a moment ago, and he said, you know, we saw here in June that the second practice was a lot hotter. The track got a lot slicker, so what you cannot do is out-adjust yourself. In other words, adjust too much to what happened in the first practice. Don't go too far. Just concentrate on how the track will change because it will change throughout the day. This track will get tighter as the race goes along tomorrow. You're right, Marty. It, it, it does. And the more, it seems like the more rubber laid down on this racetrack, especially in turn three and four, it almost gets even slicker. That hot rubber just looks like glass over there when it's this sunny out. And you will, you'll go right through the wall. So one of the things that the crew chiefs will be checking constantly throughout this practice session is track temperature. Right. What temperature is the surface? And, you know, they can go back to their notes if the track temperature does change, but right now it looks like it's going to be hot and it's going to stay hot. It doesn't look like the temperature is going to change a whole lot. Watching Rusty Wallace and Ricky Rudd, 2 and 21. Rusty going to start 31st tomorrow. Oh, you see Rusty's car wig in there. The car is very loose. And again, because the car does get tight, starts sliding across the racetrack, these early laps in the run, they've got to be loose. They've got that back end's got to come out a little bit if they're going to be right the last part of a 40-lap run. And just for your information, track temperature right now, 97.3 degrees from our trusty garage sources. Hotter than that with Bruce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's another, another matter altogether. Johnny Benson in his home state of Michigan there, racing with Rusty on the track. Rusty, 04, 84. A long time since he's gone to victory lane. You heard him talk about it a minute ago. I'll right. tell you what, Rusty is not just a little bit loose. Yeah. <laughs> he's loose in, he's loose in the middle, and he's loose off. If he can, if he can hold his breath that long, watch the car here. See that, that wiggle? That's because the car got loose. He jumped on the gas. Car broke loose, but this is a great racetrack because you have a lot of it and you can catch a loose car. That's Marty. It. Well, the other part of my conversation with Rusty was how he has to survive with that car being loose, he said, for about 10 laps. He said, it'll take 10 laps. We'll be loose for about 10 laps, but then it'll come to me. He said, you know, you, you've got to convince yourself that you have to start loose here because the track will get so much tighter the longer he runs. But he said, that's hard to hold on to, but if you can do that, your car will be better on the longer run. He said, we were fast in the first practice to start off with, but we have to be better on the longer run. Okay, the only thing he's got to be careful of is not, you know, the biggest problem about being loose at the beginning of the run is at the beginning of the race. When you have a lot of cars around you, that's even going to make the car even scarier to drive. But once the cars string out, definitely that's something you want to work for. But you really got to hang on to it at the beginning of the race when these cars are side by side, sometimes three abreast. And we saw some smoke coming from the right front fender on that two car. Wow, he is loose right he there. They, they have to run, they're running these cars so soft spring-wise in the front the tires coming up rubbing the top of the fender both the front and rear left front right front tires come up rub the fender and that's the smoke that we saw on rusty Wallace's car. so there's rusty and ricky rudd we look a little bit farther back and come upon jeff gordon we talked with uh, matt just before the start said he wasn't all that concerned about being at the top of the speed chart just wanted his car to feel the way he wants it but now He's out by himself. He talked about being back in traffic and running in traffic. Now he's by himself. So he has to find out what the balance is there because if they adjust the car for traffic, he gets out by himself, then he becomes too loose. 
Of course, Jeff Gordon taking a pretty big hit in the NASCAR Winston Cup Championship last week at Watkins Glen. Started on pole, but turn one, lap one. Punt. His contact with Greg Pippen and started on the outside. Gordon goes around and goes in first to blast. Yep. And then started a remarkable charge all the way up through the field. Got up to where he was racing for second spot in the final laps. Ran out of gas. Got to the final quarter. Punt. <laughs> and he sits there and watches all those positions go by. And that's a de dejected young man. So Jeff has now fallen 396 points behind Matt Kenseth in the race for the championship. Dale Jarrett, Kyle Petty, Terry Labonte all out in their final practice here at Michigan International Speedway. Rusty Wallace, despite as loose as we've seen him, has the fastest lap so far. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. with some of your favorite NASCAR drivers tomorrow with NASCAR in-car on in-demand. Get in-car camera channels, virtual dashboards, real-time in-car data, and live team audio. And you can order it by calling 1-888-SPORTS-IN if you've got digital cable. Practice back underway here at Michigan International Speedway. Home state race for one Johnny Benson from Grand Rapids in the 10 car. He spent the whole week up here in Michigan. Took his family a little mini vacation around his hometown. And he's had, uh, probably of all the traction with the Cup Racing, besides the one that he's won on, which is Rockingham, this has probably been his best speedway. Four top tens in the last six Michigan races here. Well, I'm sure he would love to do better here than any other racetrack on the circuit because of growing up in the Michigan area. His racing area. His dad raced up here for many, many years. Yep, dad even ran one Winston Cup race here. With dad, John Benson Sr., a trouble in turn four is that Jeremy Mayfield it's like he's blown a right rear and taking about half the corner a quarter of his car off there oh my goodness gracious wow oh my goodness that's what those tires do when they come apart and that's why NASCAR threw the caution flag to remove the debris from the racetrack because it will puncture tires and when you puncture tires the result yeah. and that's not him hitting the wall that's just from the tire just the tire coming apart Man, that's unbelievable damage. That's a backup car. That's backup car. Yep. Mayfield was scheduled to start 40th, so it's not going to cost him much in terms of track position at the start of the race, but now they need to get that backup car out, get the safety inspection done, and try and get it on the track and get a few shakedown laps before this practice ends about a half an hour from now. It's going to be a tough task for these guys. Not yeah. even a half an hour from now. All right. While the red flag's out, let's go back into the garage. Marty? Well, let's talk a little Ryan Newman, and these guys were so confident in the setup they had here in June. It did run well until the uh, the engine let go there and the fire that we saw just a moment ago. That in the first practice today, they experimented. That's the opposite of what most teams do. And then in this final practice, they went back to their setup they had here in June. They were very, very good in this practice. Just a little bit tight for Ryan. Bam, right back in the ball game when they put that June setup in. Matt? Well, Tony Stewart qualified 23rd, but he was one of those drivers that went out to qualify when the track temperature was at its hottest. Seventh in practice, tenth in practice this morning, ninth in practice on Friday. But Tony's car has been very consistent, consistently tight. The car has not responded well to changes except for the changes they just made. A new left rear spring, new right front spring. Tony came on the radio and said, Zippy, I think we might have hit on it. Zippy told him just to stay out, get back in line, and make another run, and that's exactly what he's going to do. Tony showing seventh fastest right now as Jeremy Mayfield limps his wounded Dodge back to the attention of his team, and no doubt straight to the hauler where they're already unloading the backup car. Red flag for a second time in happy hour here in Michigan. Michigan International Speedway, NASCAR on TNT with coverage of Winston Cup Happy Hour under the red flag for a second time after Jeremy Mayfield's right rear tire went apart in a big way and dropped debris all down the turn four front stretch side of the speedway. Check your mailbox for a specially marked Valpac envelope or log on to TNT.TV to register to win a chance for a VIP race weekend, including a meet and greet with Richard Petty, courtesy of Valpac and TNT. Nothing happening on the track. What about in the garage, Dave? Well, they've rolled out Jeremy's backup car. We thought we'd catch up with him and just talk to you about what that is like to try to save that thing when that comes apart like that. Well, you just try to hold on and try to remain calm. You know, it's pretty tough. I just hate it because, uh, you know, we struggled a little bit 
all weekend here. And, uh, you know, our Dodge is getting better as they went on, just uh, ran out of time there. And, I don't know what happened, you know, just come off four and evidently run over something or cut a tire down or something there. But uh, luckily we didn't get in the wall and tear the car even worse. But, you know, we got another one and these guys work hard on it. And we'll uh, hopefully get back out in this practice and see what we got. All right. Again, they've already rolled it out. They're working on changing it over so Jeremy can drive it some more in this practice session. Marty? Well, Dave, the tally of drivers who have retired from this practice session is up to one. Michael Walter, if you're done, car that good? It's good. Uh, I didn't know what to tell them to do to improve it. We ended the last session with a, with a car I felt like was where I wanted it to be. And um, we made just a couple of minor changes and, and went out and it was real free at first, which you expect. And then the car came to me and, and was good. So um, I have this theory that if, if you don't know what you're doing and you, and you admit it, then... She's the one who doesn't know what they're doing. Me. And uh, <laughs> like, like I admit it. And so I'm not trying to fake anybody out. Um, I think somebody that would be real dangerous would be someone that doesn't know what they're doing and then tries to fake. Acts like they know what right. they're doing, right? So uh, I told Slugger, I don't know what to do to it. Go have me a, he said, go have a cold Coca-Cola and a slice of Domino's pizza so I can get prepared to run the Aaron's Dream Machine today in the Bush Race. Very nice. Seamless plug for you, Mikey. You get better and better every week. Fourth and fifth in the last two Michigan races for Michael Waltrip. Alan? And sixth fastest in this practice, and he's already done. So Michael Waltrip will be one who will be in the mix tomorrow when we go green here at Michigan. Got the big jet blowers out to help scatter the remaining bits and pieces of Jeremy Mayfield's car off the track so we can get happy hour back under green. You can follow this weekend's racing action live online with NASCAR.com's Track Pass. Free 14-day trial. Check it out. Visit NASCAR.com. They are moving again here at Michigan International Speedway. Cars back out onto the track after the cleanup from Jeremy Mayfield's scattered right rear fender and tire and back bumper cover and door, door panel and roof yeah. panel and <laughs> everything else. Yeah. Wow. The right side of the car. Kurt Busch, winner here. Back uh, this season's first race in June. He's going to start 20th in tomorrow's race. He was 15th best in the first session. Watch his, uh, watch his arm here now. Watch his arm. See how he tugs on that wheel? You're, you're looking for them front wheels because sometimes you get down the corners and the front tires get so light you can't feel where they're at. And if you turn the wheel too much, they'll spin out. So you just kind of keep pulling on it. Keep looking for the, for the grip. He's not tugging on it too bad. He's got a pretty good race car. If you don't tug on it a lot. You know, and people driving a passenger car down the street, if you took your steering wheel and wiggled it around like Kurt's doing in that car, you'd be all over the road. But that's really an illustration of how much these cars move just on their own at the kind of speeds they're running here at Michigan. And how much, just like Wally said, how much the driver is keeps turning that wheel looking for the feel that Wally was talking about. Marty, what do you think about Kurt Busch and his chances? I think they're pretty good, BP. What do you think? Pretty good. I do, too. The same car that won here in June, same car that won in California as well. I asked Jimmy Finning before the practice started. I said, how's the car? He said, okay. I said, just okay. He said, just okay. But Kurt came on the radio a moment ago and said, guys, we're really close. This feels like it felt in June. Very close. What they did this last time, just a little bit tight for Kurt. They went to a smaller front sway bar. That's the only adjustment they made last time. But uh, they're pretty happy with their race car right now. Talked about Kurt Busch winning here in the June race. Here's a little look back, just to refresh the memory. Bobby Labonte started on pole, but wound up, wound up chasing Kurt Busch to the checkered flag. Come see Kurt doing the burnout. We saw, what, a couple of weeks ago at Indianapolis when Kevin Harvick did the burnout. He did the same thing to his right rear quarter panel that Jeremy yeah. Mayfield just did to his 19 car doing a burnout after the race. Yep. Kurt running the third fastest lap right now. He has put 11, now 12 laps on the board in his final practice. And the difference between his fastest lap and the last one he ran is about a second. Jamie McClary, pretty good car. Ninth fastest so far. 42 going to take the green flag in 26th place tomorrow, Matty. He is the fastest of the three Ganassi cars. In fact, I asked Jamie, I said, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you rate your car at this juncture? He said, an 8. He said, we are very, very close to where I want to have it. A tick on the tight side. They made a track bar adjustment on the last stop, put on a set of sticker tires, being brand spanking new. They're going to go out 
and make a 20-lap run just to make sure they have the car loose enough to start the race. Second Winston Cup race here in Michigan for Jamie. Made his debut here back in June. Finished 14th. Running second right now in the Raybestos Rookie of the Year standings. But he's a lot better race car driver right now in August than he was in June because he's had some chances and he's had a car that had chances to win at Pocono and Indy. Talked about Kevin Harvick's win in the Brickyard 400. There's Kevin on board the Childress 29. Tell you what, he and Robbie Gordon have been two of the hottest drivers on the circuit here. And Harvick has got three top five finishes in the last four races. And after Watkins Glen moved up two spots in the championship to fifth. He's 16th best in this session. was fourth best in the first session. Marty. Well, VP, this is the car that actually won in Indianapolis. And Kevin can thank his crew chief, Todd Barrier and his wisdom for having this car here this weekend. Now, right after they won in Indianapolis, Todd had a hunch, so he showed up at work at 6.30 in the morning, had all of his fabricators show up at 6.30 in the morning, the Monday after the Brickyard. Started cutting the car up that won Indianapolis because he talked about the right rear fender they had damaged when he did the burnout. And then the call came that he knew was coming from Richard Childers at 9.30 in the morning. Hey, Todd, you know that car that won yesterday? Let's put that in the museum. And Todd said, hey, Richard, you know what? I, I, I'm sorry. I didn't think about that. It's our Already cut up. I, we can't put it in the museum. Just can't happen. So Todd knew that call was coming at 9:30 in the morning. That's why he showed up at 6:30 and started working on the car. Marty, you think we should have told that story? Richard might be angry now because he doesn't have the. Oh that. Oh yeah. About that BP. Oh well. Well, you know what? If he wins here Sunday, I don't think Richard will be angry any longer. That's then, true. Then he can do a burnout and he can rip the right rear quarter panel off that. <laughs> yeah. Left rear. Here's what we're talking about at the Brickyard. There, Harvey is taking the checkered flag. And Childress, as happy as Richard Childress was when Dale Earnhardt won the Brickyard, I think he was just as happy seeing Harvey win and win his second battle. But Harvey, as we talked about, Chris tore that right rear quarter off the car. There's Childress. Is he happy or what? Okay, let me get this straight. I'm going to kiss a rubber, oil, gasoline-soaked brick, and it's going to be the one of the best kisses I ever had. Absolutely. <laughs> Wasn't that Childress's quote? It was the best cold kiss I've ever yeah. had or something? Yeah. So Harvick right now continuing his final practice and again, he's 16th fastest in the session. He's about to put his 14th lap up. And um, it's about nine-tenths of a second difference between the fastest and the slowest. That's pretty steady, consistent laps. That's good for tomorrow's race. What do you got, Dave? And when I got Jason Leffler in street clothes. I mean, uh, the guy qualifies six, then you think he'd be, you know, struggling to put the thing in the race mode. Jason, you guys uh, are quitting early, huh? Yeah, the car's really good. Net Zero Pontiac's running good. Uh, Tony Fur and everybody's doing a great job. You know, more practice doesn't always mean more speed. So just quit, or quit here where we think the car's good. And we'll start again tomorrow, obviously. Uh, that's the important part, but we think we got a good starting spot. This is, uh, we saw you at Indy. We didn't see you at Watkins Glen. Now you're going to do a few more races with this team. What's the potential? Um, right now, I think this, uh, I don't really know what the potential is. I got a commitment with Dodge, and Team ASC, and CarQuest in the Craftsman Truck Series, and I love it there. Got a great group of guys, and they work hard for me. So right now, I guess my commitment is to win the Craftsman Truck Series championship and uh, win as many races as we can. And I enjoy running that series. Look forward to going to Bristol next Wednesday. Well, Alan, one thing I think they found out here is they can get speed out of that zero car. They were like 17th last time I looked at the chart, and they've said they're very comfortable with that. And Jason's another one of those guys where the difference between his fastest lap and the last one that he ran is not all that great, about nine-tenths of a second, just like Kevin Harvick. Dale Jarrett. He won this race last year, didn't he? Yeah, he's won a bunch here. Four times. Four times at Michigan. Won his first ever NASCAR Winston Cup race here. I was in the booth that day with his dad. That was huge. There it is. Day. How about that? Wow. These guys in the truck are good. I didn't want... 1991. That's Jarrett in the Wood Brothers 21 and Davey Allison in the 28. And Jarrett beat him to the line by fractions, fractions of a second. And it was a big day. See, now, as experienced as he is at winning now, he would not be in Victor Lane with that hat, with that that trophy that hat upside, on. The hat on, that trophy <laughs> upside down on his head. Yeah. Michigan wins the one you just saw there, August 91. Also the August 96 race, June 99. And this race one year ago. Last three Michigan finishes for Dale Jarrett. Second, first, and 32nd.
did not go well here in June. He's hoping for much better. He's hoping for a return to form on Sunday. And it doesn't seem to be going well right now. He's 32nd in the best. And the line that he's taking through the corner, it, you know, it, it's a top and bottom. It's like the car sliding. Well, it used to be. These guys used to be so strong here because I, I always felt they had so much motor that they could run down in the bottom of the racetrack. And you need so much so much of that to get off the corners because you scrub so much speed coming off. These guys always had so much power. They're always really, really good here. But even his teammate, Elliot Sadler is 33rd quick right now. So they are struggling. Rusty Wallace has posted the fastest lap in Winston Cup Happy Hour here at the Michigan International Speedway. You're watching NASCAR on TNT. Winston Cup final practice continuing for Michigan as the race for the championship continues with a 400 mile of tomorrow. There's the man leading the parade for the big title at the end of the year, Matt Kenseth. Cambridge, Wisconsin, up by 258 points on Dale Earnhardt Jr. coming into tomorrow's race, meaning he can't lose the championship lead tomorrow, even if he finishes last and Jr. wins. We talked about fuel mileage earlier. And this is one of those teams that we'll be watching that always gets great fuel mileage here. He qualified. He's going to need it because he qualified 34th. Dale Jr. second fastest so far in the practice. Looks like he's heading back into the garage, Matty. And one major advantage of being part of a multi-car team is the sharing of information. In fact, during that last caution, Dale Jr. was bored in his race car. He flipped his radio over to the One Cars channel, and he was listening in down to what Jeff Green was saying, and he hit his mic and said, hey, guys, this is Jr. How's it going? Jeff Green said, how did you do that? He didn't know he had the option inside his race car to flip over and talk to Jr., and Jeff Green told him, said, my car is tied off, but okay. He said, Jr., are you running on the bottom, or have you made the journey up high yet? Jr. said, I'm running the low line, close to the low line. Kenseth heading back to the garage, 34th fastest in the practice. He's run 25 laps. Is that the most of anybody? It's pretty close. Rusty's run 27. And Ryan Newman's run 26. And then Matt in there in 25 laps. Well, how about Ward Burton with 32 laps? So there you go. Those are the guys that have put the most laps in on the track in this practice. Been talking about Rusty Wallace for a bit in this uh, practice session. Marty, he's back out. He is very happy, Alan. In fact, he came on the radio in the middle of this run and said, guys, this is the best handling car I've had at Michigan in years. This is a great race car. Rusty is right now doing a fuel mileage run. They're not going to play with the chassis anymore. They're going out. They're going to run 15 laps, get a good read on the fuel mileage, and then they should be done for the day. And uh, Rusty Wallace never quits happy hour, so I'll qualify that, that they should be done for the day. Right now, he is a happy camper inside that two car. They fixed it up. We saw that car very, very loose at the beginning of this practice session. And we just heard him say, getting a little tight already. See that tire smoking on that fender? Rusty Wallace turned 47 on Thursday. Jeremy Mayfield's back out. Nice job by the Everham team to get that backup car on the track in what practice time remained. Yeah, that's big. Just to even get a couple laps on the racetrack is so important. It's so hard to take a car off the trailer and go racing with it without ever getting any laps on it. So, yeah, this is... Uh, it's this big. is one of those attaboys for the boys yeah. there at BP. Yes, it is. And, you know, somebody else that, that factors into that attaboy equation are the NASCAR officials who do the safety inspection on the car because they don't let them just roll the backup car out and take it onto the track. It has to go through the safety inspection, and they really have to hustle to get that done and give the team the okay to bring the car onto the track. There's a couple of things they will allow to do after this practice session. They'll check the size of the engine and all that stuff afterwards. But Right, the technical inspection, the, the templates and all that, but the safety belts, the fuel cell, all that kind of thing, that all gets checked before the car goes out. Talked about Jeff Green, Dale Earnhardt Jr. having a chat with his teammate. Green's got a pretty speedy car. He does fourth best so far. Dave? BP, I just checked with the crew to see what was going on there. Ask them if they made a significant change between this morning's practice and this happy hour session. The answer, yes. The car was very tight from the center of the corner off. They changed uh, springs mainly, and the front was the biggest issue. And uh, that has corrected that problem. Right now, they're just working on a little bit tight going into the corner. The car won't quite turn the way Jeff wants it to. And they got a little vibration that Jeff was talking about, too. They think might just be a, maybe a crack header or something like that. Nothing big in the engine department. Okay. Oh, it's tight there, get in. 
I'll tell you what, you look at that shot right there, though, I'll tell you one of the things to look forward to about tomorrow's race, how wide this racetrack is, how much of the racetrack is usable, and we'll see him stacked up in about four or five lanes. And that's one reason that fuel mileage is so critical, because the well, racetrack... Right there, so. Yeah. He said, that's all I can stand right there. <laughs> racetrack is so wide that you don't have to run into somebody to get by them. Yeah. Jeff Burton, 99 car. Qualified eighth for tomorrow's race. He's got the 19th fastest lap now, but the difference between his fastest time and his last lap time, we don't know what kind of tires he's on right now, but it's only three-tenths of a second. Now, I'm assuming he's on the same tires because his fastest time was his 10th lap, and he's about to complete his 15th lap time right there. And that 40-40 that you see on the last lap is about as fast as anyone's lap with some laps on the with after they run a few laps and that lap that last lap actually ran a 40 81 so seven seven tenths yeah. he's got a good record here he'll be he'll be a factor tomorrow we think led until six laps to go in this race uh one year ago when dale jarrett went by him how about elliot sadler robert yates racing well, I just mentioned a moment ago, he's 33rd best in this practice session. Elliot showed up here with a beard. Did he? So I walked over to him in the garage. I said, okay, what's up with this? this is, it can't be getting ready for hunting season already. He said, well, just being lazy. <laughs> That's okay. Elliot was one of the uh, Ford NASCAR drivers who were in downtown Detroit on Thursday when the power went out. They were signing autographs in the middle of the football stadium, the Dome Stadium there. So he had an interesting experience getting out of Detroit in the middle of the big blackout. Elliot Sadler. Yeah. And here's the other Elliot. Bill Elliot. Mr. Michigan. And guess what? The man has said, quit, fellas. Gotta quit. It's over. Bill Elliott got the 12th fastest lap in this practice, which is good because he was really struggling yesterday. He qualified 32nd. And so the seven-time Michigan winner has got some work cut out for him to come from the back if he's going to pick up victory number eight. And you said seven-time winner. Yeah. You know, his teammate, I've been watching, has run some pretty good laps there with that backup car. Mayfield after the... Jerry Mayfield after um, he blew that tire, they pulled out the backup, and the car might be pretty competitive. So will it be Bill Elliott's day tomorrow to charge through the pack and take a Michigan win? Maybe rookie Greg Biffle in the 16 for local owner Jack Roush? Or how will the race for the championship play out? More from Michigan when we come back on TNT. NASCAR Happy Hour for Michigan International Speedway is brought to you by Wagner Wide Shot Power Painter. Professional results in a third of the time. Suzuki, maker of innovative motorcycles, scooters, and all-terrain vehicles. Quaker State, the power to reduce friction. And Stacker 2, the world's strongest fat burner. Burn fat, crush cravings, and supercharge your energy. Practice is over. Time to push him back to the garage and begin to make those final mechanical preparations for tomorrow's 400-miler. Matty? And Jimmy McMurray doing some mechanical alterations here to your helmet. What are you doing? Well, I got a fan here, and uh, it's been sweating so much the last couple of days. I've only got one of these new helmets, and I'm just trying to dry it out before I get in the bush race. Now, you told me before you went out to make that last run, the car was an 8 on a scale of 1 to 10. How is it now? You ended practice early. Yeah, I, I'm pretty happy. Um, I don't think we're as good as we were at Indy when we ended happy hour, but... And this is the Indy car. Yeah, this is the car we ran in Indiana at Pocono, um, but the balance didn't change. We ran like 15 laps, and... Um, fell off to like a, a 40, 70, I think, and ran there for about four or five laps. So I told him instead of, of um, wearing the engine out and taking a chance on uh, getting in a wreck or something, let's just get it ready for tomorrow. And did you and Donnie Wingo, your crew chief, talk about fuel mileage at all and any kind of calculations that he might have come up with? Yeah, it's better than normal, so that's good. This, this will be a fuel mileage race. Um, seems like every single week it is. So, um, you know, we've had a really good car the last few weeks, so... Hopefully, if it's our turn on Sunday, it'll be. And if not, we've still got a good car. He hopes to capitalize tomorrow and come away with a win. He starts 26. And Dave. Maddie standing by with Jimmy Spencer, who had a pretty good pickup from this morning's session to now, 14th from 28th. Jimmy, uh, how good is your car? Not too bad. You know, uh, it's still not as good as getting, it needs to be getting into the corners. I mean, this track, 
This track's a big, flat, sort of circular track. It's got long straightaways, but yet the corners are so big and sweeping, and there's so much room in the corners. And, uh, you know, it's very deceiving. And, and you have to be really, really good getting in the corners so you can turn the car, get the angle of the car right off. And if you don't, you lose two or three tenths a lap, two or three tenths a corner, half a second a lap. It's hard to believe. Uh, it's the only track I know of that you can lose that much time in the corners. Uh, it's, it's incredible. And you think you're really hauling mail? And <laughs> you're not. But uh, we, we adjusted our car. We got more rear spring in the, in, the, in the back, more total rear spring than we got in the front. That's unheard of, but I, I, just, I can't believe this stuff. But I just say, hey, this is what it's doing, fix it. I don't want to know. And I know BP's mind is going right now. The wheels are turning up there, and I'm sure he'll have a comment about that. First, let's go to Marty Snyder. Well, Dave, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the middle of the debriefing here trying to describe how his race car is doing with a, a lot of hand movements there. How's the car, Jr.? We got a lot better at that practice. We had the car. We had some stuff on the car, the suspensions and spindles and stuff, but it didn't really work at all in the first practice. And, uh, you know, uh, we put basically the same rest setup we had in the car last time. It runs so good, and the car's good. We just dialed it in a little better. We still got a little push in the middle of both ends, and but I'm a lot better. He said, you know where I've got to run tomorrow is a high line. If I can't run the high line, I can't win the race. BP, you know about that, don't you? No, oh, yeah, I sure do. You've got to be able to run high. you got to be able to run low. But I think the winner's going to be the guy that can run on the bottom all day long. Tony Stewart, are you listening? The guy that <laughs> runs on the bottom and the guy that gets good fuel mileage. It's amazing how competitive these races have become, the things that are coming to determine it now. These crew chiefs are probably going to sweat that mileage calculation from now until the green flag, until the checkered flag tomorrow. Absolutely. I mean, that's that, like they said, this is what it's all about is fuel mileage. But you still got, like Jimmy was saying, you still have to be comfortable here. You drive into these corners so far, especially here at Michigan. I mean, you just go way down in there. That car's got to be comfortable for you because it's scary if it's not. And he talked about having... 50% of the springs, over 50% of the springs in the back of the race car. Folks, back in the 70s, you had 75, 80% in the front. And now they've got over 50% of the spring, total spring rate in the back. That's how much has changed in the last 25 years. Big, wide, fast racetrack. Great competitive field for tomorrow. Should be a lot of fun. Coverage beginning at 1.30 Eastern Time with Discover Card Countdown to Green. That's tomorrow on TNT. Thanks for joining us for our NASCAR coverage today. We'll see you tomorrow at 1.30 Eastern.